Wildfires are burning in parts of the western U.S. and Canada, forcing thousands of people to flee their homes and forcing Canada to call up the military to help. In addition to the physical devastation the flames are causing, researchers are getting a clearer picture of just how dangerous all that toxic smoke is to human health. Here's William Brangham. Hey, watch your back! We're getting flanked again! It's an apocalyptic scene in Northern California as the massive park fire outside the city of Chico exploded in size overnight, burning 4,000 acres an hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up getting caught. Firefighters faced triple digit temperatures as neighborhoods went up in flames and gas tanks detonated in the heat. Yesterday, wildfire cameras caught the formation of a so-called fire NATO, a massive vortex of flame and smoke. The park fire was only 3% contained by this morning forcing thousands of people to flee. We said a prayer over our house, and we just prayed to God. Paul and Janet Mallory were forced to evacuate, but their home was spared. We're happy that we've, we're out, and uh, we just prayed over it, and um, I believe that our house is standing today because of a miracle. There are now more than 60 wildfires burning across Oregon and Washington. The country's largest, Oregon's Durkee Fire, has consumed nearly 300,000 acres and is less than a quarter contained. Here's mom and dad's house. In Canada, this is what's left of Jasper, Alberta. Alberta's premier, Danielle Smith, echoed the feelings of so many. We share the sense of loss with all of those who live in the town, who care for it, and who have helped build it. The devastation is all too familiar this fire season, as extreme heat and dry conditions, supercharged by climate change, fuel catastrophic fires across the American and Canadian West. Already this year, seven million acres have burned in North America. These fires also generate massive plumes of smoke, which carry tiny, dangerous particles. And that smoke spreads across a much larger region, covering huge swaths of North America all the way to the East Coast. We think that living in a smaller city um, or living particularly in, in farm country where I grew up, uh, that you're protected from the effects of high particle levels. But unfortunately, with the wildfires, everyone is affected, either large city or small city. Lauren Wold runs a lab at The Ohio State University that studies how those tiny airborne particles, they're known as PM2.5, when breathed in, can harm human health. They can actually pass through the lining, get into your bloodstream, and then affect your heart, your lungs, your brain, any organ system. On days when PM levels are high, particularly during the wildfires, for example, that there is a significant increase in the amount of patients who are going to emergency rooms for things like sudden cardiac events. Wold's research indicates that not only do these negative health impacts last long after the air is cleared, but in studies with pregnant mice exposed to contaminated air, their offspring were also seriously harmed by the smoky air. So mice that are in utero, that they themselves are not breathing, contaminated air, their mothers are, that passes to them and then lasts for those baby mice for a good chunk of their own lifetime? Yeah, correct. Uh, can, once it's in the bloodstream, it can get into the maternal um, and fetal circulation and have effects on the offspring. And not only uh, does it have cardiac effects, but it also has, uh, we've shown that it, has, it predisposes animals to development of a neurocognitive phenotype similar to an Alzheimer's disease animal. One recent study showed that exposure to smoke-filled air can also shorten a person's life. It estimated that between 2008 and 2018, wildfire smoke in California was responsible for over 50,000 premature deaths, equating to an economic impact of over $400 billion. Anthony Wexler directs the Air Quality Research Center at the University of California, Davis. He wasn't involved in this study, but says this is further evidence of how climate change is impacting human health. Now, climate change is, uh, is changing everything about the weather patterns that we're used to. Wildfire smoke emits a lot of PM2.5, and so 
uh, just extending those correlations, uh, the, the higher the concentration, the more people will die from, from heart attack. And uh, the wildfire smoke makes a lot of this PM 2.5, and so we're going to see excess deaths. So how do you know if the air you're breathing today is risky? Researchers measure that using what's called the AQI, or Air Quality Index. The higher the number, the more dangerous the air. 50% or so of the U.S. is under unsafe levels. And the scary part is that those with sensitive conditions, as well as the elderly or the very young, uh, the levels are actually different. So, you know, 100 is not um, considered safe for those individuals. That's a huge number of Americans today breathing this dangerous air. It is. It's very scary. Researchers say limiting the time spent outdoors, wearing a mask when you can't, and making sure air conditioning and heating systems have high-quality filters can all help. But until these massive fires are brought under control, the air that many Americans are currently breathing will continue to be a threat. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham.